Welcome to this series on the Cisco Secure Access. Well, this is the introduction video, and therefore I'm going to talk a little bit about Cisco Secure Access, and then we're going to jump to the UI where I'm going to show you the different components of Cisco Secure Access and where to configure what. So to begin with, is the Cisco Secure Access is a Cisco's cloud-based platform, which is multiple levels of defense against internet-based threats. It helps you connect securely to the internet, your SaaS applications, and we're talking about your private digital resources, whether you connect from your organization's network or roaming off a network, which means from anywhere. From anywhere you try to connect to any of these things, Cisco Secure Access is going to take care of it. To put it in a nutshell, there are a lot of things. There's a lot of security uh, that comes into the picture when we talk about any of these use cases. And all of that security is taken care of by the Cisco Secure Access. Extremely powerful and extremely useful. Now let's jump right into the UI. But before that, let me just tell you that this is the user guide for the Cisco Secure Access. Uh, do not worry, I'm gonna put a link in the description for anyone who wants to go ahead and check it out. So yeah, let's go ahead and check out the UI. When you log into the Cisco Secure Access, you land on the overview page. The overview dashboard displays status, usage, and health metrics for your organization. Well, the information that you see on the overview page, it helps you to address security threats and monitor the system usage. It talks about the get started with Cisco Secure Access right here, and it has three uh, steps. The first one, you see it's done. The second one also shows it's done, and the third one in progress. The first one, configure infrastructure, uh, secure resources and access, and then you got uh, configure end user connectivity. Let me just expand these and show it to you why the first uh, two show up as uh, done, and the third one shows up as in progress. So if I expand the first one, it shows one network tunnel added uh, already and seven users already there. So I've configured this part and that's why it shows done. If I expand the second one, it shows that I've already completed these three things that are listed there. And the third one, which says in progress, well, I have configured DNS servers uh, zero trust as well but I've not configured uh, the VPN profile, any VPN profile. So what I need to do is if I just go ahead and click on it, it's gonna show me all these three uh, one by one. The first one with DNS servers, as you can see, I've already configured these DNS servers. As you can see right here, the first one for umbrella and the second one for umbrella, and this is my internal DNS server, and that's why it pops up right here. Uh, what I can do is I can just go ahead and click on the next uh, button here, next zero trust access, and go to the second part. So let me just go ahead and click on it and reach out to the zero trust section. As you can see, I already got some configuration in here. These are the traffic steering rules and these are automatically updated. Uh, I can manually add as well. So completely my choice. So I can just go ahead and click on this next button again and go to the VPN section and you'll find that I do not have VPN configured as you can see right here, right? So we're gonna go ahead and configure VPN in the upcoming sections as well, uh, upcoming videos and uh, yeah, be done with that. And uh, this is the same place from where you actually get to configure your DNS servers. Uh, manage DNS servers, you click on that and then add DNS servers. How do you do that? I'm gonna show it to you in a separate video. No problem, I go back to the overview now. Okay, now scroll. Uh, let's scroll down and check out the other options. Okay, so we got the data transfer section where we have all these parts. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is uh, the time. You can change it from last 24 hours to seven days or last month. And based on that, the data is gonna change, obviously. Now it's uh, listing us uh, the data from uh, last seven days. On the right-hand side, you can go ahead and check or uncheck these boxes um, to go ahead and you know look at information according to your needs, uh, completely your choice. Now, if we scroll down a little bit more, we see the security um, uh, section where you have two parts, security activity and top security categories. So security activities, uh, first of all, it shows us the access events, 17 requests and blocked 14. Again, you can check and check and change the time on these as well if I didn't inform you. Anyways, uh, the point is if you go ahead and click on these numbers right here, it's gonna take you to the activity search. If I click on, for example, 14 or the number 17, it's gonna take me to the activity search and show me relevant logs 
there. If I go ahead and click on top security categories, it's just showing me a few of these malware blocks, uh, command control, command and control uh, blocks, uh, crypto mining blocks and phishing blocks. There are the categories as well that are part of it. We're going to talk about um, all these categories in detail in the upcoming videos. And then uh, if I go ahead and show you the third section right here, uh, which is users and uh, groups. In the users and groups section, uh, again, we have this option of 24 hours, seven days and blah, blah, blah. Uh, VPN connection events, there are none because I don't have any VPN connection uh, uh, set up. Uh, I got ZTNA authorization events, 55, not a problem. And it shows on the right side, top five users created requests. Um, the first one and the second one. The second one is basically uh, an identity that I've already deleted. Does this user was overwritten? Um, I'm going to show you how to provision users as well in the upcoming videos, so not a problem. Check and check again in the same way. It's completely your choice according to your own needs. Then I got um, uh, private resources, and it gives you this information about applications accessed uh, to allowed 55, blocked 17. So feel free to check it out uh, on your dashboard. And as you can see, check and check, and it shows you the graph. Very neat and tidy, very clean. Uh, even if you have a lot of uh, traffic, it's still going to be very easy for you to, you know, go ahead and check these graphs because of uh, the option of the these check boxes, right? So you can segregate these. So you, first you can check allowed, and then you can check blocked, and then uncheck allowed. It's it's completely a choice, as I said. You can go to the activity search bar directly from here if you click on activity search. The last section we're going to talk about is this right here, which is talking about the resources that have been accessed. Uh, so VPN resources accessed zero because we don't have a VPN, any VPN profile configured. Uh, client base ZTNA uh, and 48 and client less uh, ZTNA 24. And again, the check boxes are right here, the first one, the second one, and the third one. And we got top three resources accessed. Actually, these are the same resources, but I just created them in two different, as two different private resources. They're actually the same. Uh, I just wanted to test something out, so that's why. Anyways, uh, the, the point is that you'll see the top resources that have been accessed right here. And if you want to change the time on it, you can uh, scroll actually up here to the private resources section because it's actually the same section uh, under private resources, as you can see, right? Uh, so that's why once you change the time here, it's going to show, it's going to reflect on the ones at the bottom as well. Okay. So um, let me show you the other sections as well, real quick on the left hand side. Let's go ahead and check those out. So if we take a look at uh, connect quickly, we see three sections in here, network connections, users and groups. Uh, users and groups is uh, from where you go ahead and provision users and you do the SSO settings and everything, um, you know, basically manage or, or connect to your IDPs from here. You got end user connectivity that we just checked a few minutes back. Um, we got resources. What are the resources that you can protect? A ton of stuff in here. Private resources, which could be a lot of things, right? Multiple things under private resources. You got registered networks, internal networks, and so on. Under secure, this is where the magic happens. Uh, the access policy where you define whether you want to allow or block a certain connection or a certain access request. Right, a ton of stuff in there. I'm gonna make a separate video for access policies. I'm gonna show it to you in other videos as well. Obviously, it's gonna be a part of every other video because that, as I said, uh, access policies where we allow our block. So in a nutshell, if we were to say that, this particular section is divided into three main parts. Uh, the first one is policy, the second one is profiles, and the third column uh, that talks about settings. And uh, in policy, we've got access policy, data loss prevention policy. In profiles, you have endpoint posture profiles, which is extremely important. Um, you got IPS profiles, again, extremely important web profiles as well. And then the settings section, you have all of uh, these particular, uh, you know, components and options available. And uh, here, monitor, uh, extremely important, uh, where you check the logs and just try to understand why uh, a certain access is allowed or blocked. It gives you different details on that. Um, I'm going to cover this uh, separately in a video as well. This, uh, this requires a lot of uh, attention uh, because this is an extremely important uh, section of uh, the uh, the dashboard where you check the logs and everything. All the other kind of logs are right in here. And you get and then you got the admin section where you get the accounts authentication where you see the box, um, you know, Dropbox, 
WebEx, uh, and so on. Uh, you got API keys in here, a log management and licensing. If you go to workflows, um, it doesn't show anything. If you click on it, it'll show you these three parts, nothing. You see these three parts in in, in the overview page as well, right? So it's it's gonna do the same thing. If you go ahead and click on this, um, the, uh, you know, DNS servers, uh, zero trust, VPN, it's going to take you to the same page. Again, uh, you can configure it from there as well. So completely your choice. Extremely, extremely important. A ton of stuff in here, a lot of stuff to cover, a lot of security, awesome product. Definitely going to cover all of this in detail. Uh, so stay tuned. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, put it down in the comments section. I'll be happy to help. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. You have a great time ahead. Goodbye.